Hello everyone, I'm Chessic44 and welcome to this Let's Play of Tyranny. Last episode, we've been looking throughout uh, Lethian's Crossing here. He took a look through basically almost all of the upper levels and helped uh, deal with a little, deal with a couple little issues that were going on. Now we still have a few more areas to look at. Probably going to take a while investigating these, but let's see. First, let's speak with this Biotis person. Welcome, friend! The merchant cries out to you, his belt jingling with rings. He waves his arms about in a dramatic fat presentation of his wares. What brings you to my humble trading post? Have a certain something in mind, or just browsing? Show me what you have for sale. Anything of note? Forge-bound hammer. Ooh, nice design there. Sigil of fire. Ah, oh, we could have gotten cheaper. Volcanic weapon. This scroll contains a magical accent which causes a material force spell to grant burning strikes that damage targets in a line. That's interesting. Let's grab it. That's very interesting. Okay. A material force spell to grant burning strikes that dar damage targets in a line. I wonder if... I bet... Yeah, it's this one. Oh. Oh, that's very interesting. On weapon crit... Right now, on a crit, it damages in an area. But if I do this, it adds fire damage in a line. Oh, that is very interesting. So if I had a fire and that, and then this, that would be a very <laughs> impressive fire spell. I like that. I mean, I'm not going to be using it anytime soon, but I do like that. <laughs> hmm. Well, anyway... Interesting as it is, let's take a look in the forge. We have people. Excuse me. We have people to speak with in here. I apologize. Forgive my belch. Okay. Oh, and we're just talking. Master, the fight binder is here. Sidenia turns and approaches you. Her lithe body moving fluidly as she walks. She stops before you, her stance solid and sure, but you see she is standing lightly on her feet, ready to move if necessary. She never takes her eyes off of you, but you know she is acutely aware of her surroundings. Fatebinder! May, may the fires of your forge never cool! I had hoped our paths would cross. Word has reached my ears of your hand in removing the Edict of Storms from Sentinel Stand Keep. She nods to you in a small salute. That was no small feat. I would ask you how you did it, but I'm sure you have more important things to talk about. In my years leading the Forgebound, I have never heard of a Fatebinder accomplishing something of such magnificent significance. It is an honor to meet someone of such distinguished deeds. What can this Servant of the Flame do for you? Why have you come to Lethian's Crossing? What an odd question, Fatebinder. When you showed up in the Forge, I thought you had been sent to check up on me. As my mission came directly from Tunon, shouldn't you already know? I was tasked with creating an artifact to protect the Forgebound from the Bane. We have been delayed too often and lost too many of our own, so it was decreed that something must be done. I created the Mage Bane Helm to keep the Bane at bay. Once the Helm is in place, its magic will keep the Bane locked away inside the old walls. Ah, uh, let's see... Why did you create the helm? The forge bound are crafters of weapons and armor, fate binder, not statues and baubles. I make what I know. It is also portable and can be moved easily or used in battle, should its protection be needed elsewhere in the future. For the time being, though, it will remain here, protecting the forge bound. We have a job to do and cannot do it properly if we are constantly assaulted by outside forces. Why do the forge bound stay here if the bane are such a threat? This forge is in the shadow of the old walls in an area rich with iron. We have ample supply of raw material and the influence of ancient magics. It's an acceptable risk, 
and with the helm in place the bane will no longer be an issue. Why were you asked to create this item? Couldn't any forgebound here do it? All forgebound are masters of the, at their craft, but each also has their special talents. The mage bane required someone whose skills were well above those who haven't been practicing as long as I have. Tunon wanted a masterpiece, so he asked the master. How did you become master of the forgebound? I was trained at a young age to be a warrior, but never felt any connection to that life, except when I was instructed how to repair my equipment. The fire spoke to me. It sang when I stoked it, and told me where to swing my hammer to achieve the proper shape. I knew from that first moment that it would be my life. I apprenticed with the forgebound and focused exclusively on my craft. Soon my skills were superior to everyone else. I took risks with magics no one else dared to touch, and created some of the most powerful attacks ever to come from the forgebound. Kairos recognized my skills and granted me the title of Master of the Forge. This is why Tunon asked me personally to create an artifact to protect Lethian's crossing. Our goals are the same. I was sent to ensure the Forgebound can continue making weapons for the disfavored. Then you are in luck. Once the helmet has been placed, the interruptions caused by the Bane will be no more, and the Forgebound can truly return to their work. I was sent to ensure all was well with the Forgebound. Everything seems in order here. I will take my leave. As you wish, Faintbinder. I was just on my way to place the helmet. If you wouldn't mind, I'd like you to join us. The settlers have created a spot on the third tier. I will meet you there. Seems simple enough. But we do have other places to investigate first. The sunburnt man dips his head in greeting. An outsider never arrives alone. At least that is what my mother always said. Seems she knew what she was talking about. He nods thoughtfully at his own words. I'm Eldian. Welcome to Lethian's Crossing. Well, if it isn't Tudon's fate binder. Welcome back to the crossing. Haven't seen you around here since you put the disfavored in charge of everything. Eldian looks you over. Must say, my memory seems to be failing. Something I never thought I'd say. The way people talk about how you came through and drove the Brotherhood out of town, you should be ten feet tall and shoot lightning from your eyes. I seem to remember you being a little more human. Can't always tell the content of a pie from its crust, though, can you? Thankfully, the disfavored haven't been too bad. At least you didn't choose the Scarlet Chorus to be our overlords. But enough of my prattling. You didn't come here for a history lesson or to get my opinion of your grandeur. He waves his hand dismissively at his previous comments. The Adjudicator sent you for the Archon of Song, I assume. What can this old fool do for you? What was that about the Archon of Song? Siren? The songbird? Feels like it's half the town she's got mooning over her in that hovel near the river. It's on the first tier if you want to find her. Feel free to take her with you when you go. He cants his head slightly, banishing his sour expression. But seeing as you're not here for her, what can I do for you? Can I ask you some questions about Lithian's Crossing? If you have questions about our settlement, I'm the one to ask. I've the dubious distinction of being the oldest living residence of Le resident of Lethian's Crossing, so I've been here for a lot of its history. Eyes, hips, hair, and hearing might be failing, but my mind still remembers everything that happened here. What would you like to know about? I'll do my best not to go on too long about it. I know I have a problem keeping my conversations short. On my way in, I ran into some merchants who were leaving town. Why are people leaving? If I were to be honest, Fatebinder, I'm surprised more people haven't left. Not just the merchants. The current tension in town between the Brotherhood and Kairos' forces is making Lethian's Crossing a very dangerous place to live. But life outside is even worse, so where would they go? At least the merchants can take their livelihood with them. The disfavored keep everything under tight control with incredible discipline. Everyone is expected to follow the rules to the letter, and the punishments meted out are harsh. Not really the best environment for the settlers, but the Forgebound thrive on it, and the disfavored only really care about them. I'd like to ask about the Crossing's history. If you have questions about the goings-on in the Crossing, I'm the one to ask. I've been here for more of its history than anyone else. What would you like to know? 
who is Lethian? The biggest pain in the ass I ever knew? He turns bright red, blushing at his words, then lets out a huge guffaw. <laughs> I suppose I shouldn't talk about my mother like that. She was a mediocre merchant, but a great leader. The war in the northern kingdoms cost her a very lucrative trade route up north, but she managed to earn trade stewardships from Kairos, and for a short time she had a monopoly on grain, salt, and tin here in the tears. What did my grandmother say? Give a blind man time and a pile of rocks, and eventually he'll hit a target. Eh, not that she didn't deserve it, but I think luck played a bigger part in her success than actual talent. But Kairos gives, and Kairos takes. The next year, Lethian was stripped of her trade rights. Suddenly she had a large staff, but no goods to trade and no means to pay anyone. But she was a stubborn one, and knew if she just kept at it, eventually things would turn around for her. She figured the trade goods would, could come to us. The location was good enough. It's crazy how that would happen. So she decided to concentrate on making an existing local settlement into the center of commerce for the Tears, and by the claws of a beast she did just that. I thought she was crazy choosing a town nestled up to the old walls, but apparently she knew what she was doing. It wasn't long after that it was renamed Lethian's Crossing. With the bridges over the old walls, this was the only place to go if you wanted to take weeks off of your trip. Eventually, she hired the Bronze Brotherhood to act as our local guards. We were big enough and had enough commerce to warrant the protection. Lethian was your mother. Of course. How did you think I became the Reeve of the Crossing? certainly not my storytelling or charm. I may be the oldest living resident here, but that's certainly not a good enough reason to make someone a leader. Come to think of it, neither is just being the offspring of the former leader. <laughs> oh, well, dang, someone is... Hmm. Okay. <laughs> but, like it or not, that's how things are. My mother was a wonderful woman. She might not have been the nicest person, and she might have been over-fond of a dalliance here or there, or, or there, or there, uh, but who isn't? May her rest be ever free of disturbance. How did you build the old wall's bridges? Lethian was the mastermind of that. She could tie a knot with one hand, one string. I remember watching her draw systems of ropes and knots in the sand, telling me what they would do when built. I thought she was crazy. Says she got the idea for the bridges from seeing galleys pulled out of the water into dock. Apparently the hardest part was getting the initial climbing team to brave the old walls and set the first ties. But apparently you can pay a man enough rings for him to overcome his fear of old walls predators. Why did you settle here? Necessity. The rope bridges let us cross the old walls. With them, it didn't matter what trade rights we had, we'd be at a crossroads to the northern tiers, an unbeatable location. The Siege of Ardent and the Bastard City ended up helping us. All those folks heading to points east crossed through our little settlement, and many of them decided to stake a claim with us. By then, Lethian discovered there was iron in our rivers. She thought it'd make us rich, but it also made us a target. The old walls don't make passage through the area easy, and our bridges cut days to weeks off of a trip. Lethian's crossing is the best bet to get your shipment where it needs to go. Mix a mother load of iron ore into it, and we suddenly had a target painted on us. What is Kairos' interest in the crossing? Iron, plain and simple. Now we have the forge bound here, toiling away with the ore they pull from the river. We're being squeezed for our resources. If you're after a drink, better to squeeze fruit than a stone. And it would seem many people find us to be very juicy indeed. There was a merchant who tried to peddle iron stocks as magical because they came from areas near the old walls. One of the people he sold to happened to be a disfavored courier. The courier then showed the rock to a forge-bound master who immediately recognized its potential for making superior weapons. It was brought to Kairos' attention, and soon afterwards soldiers and forge-bound came to Lethian's crossing. They came with such force our options were to either comply with what they wanted, or die. Uh, <coughs> Why does the Brotherhood want Lethian's crossing? Land? Breeding stock? They've been here longer than I have, so maybe they consider it home too. But Kairos' purse masters are no longer paying them to fight. And if a mercenary is killing for free, is something suspect. In the end, I suppose it doesn't matter. Raytamon will never let go. He feels he owns this town, and he aims to have it be his. Well, he did run off. He's gonna be a problem. 
What can you tell me about the spire in Lethian's Crossing? Eldian shakes his head. Sometimes I wonder why Lethian thought it was a good idea to settle here. We already had a bane problem before the Forgebound set up here. Now that they're using the crossing as one of their main forges, the bane issue is even worse. Since the bane are drawn to magical energy, we have to be on constant alert for them escaping. Uh oh. And the bane ha and the bane helm is going likely a font of magical energy. Oh boy, I sense a problem. How did you seal the door? I obtained a keystone that can be used to open or seal the door. One of Kyrus' soldiers found it while they were looking for a way to seal the doors to keep the bane from escaping. The sealed door is only a temporary measure, though. It holds the bane back for now, but it won't last for much longer. That is why Tunon instructed Zidenia to create an artifact to protect Lethian's crossing from the bane. Will you let me into the old walls? I'm afraid that's a risk I'm not willing to take, Fatebinder. Once the doors are unsealed, there's a good chance Bane will flood into Lethian's Crossing. As much as I would love to help you, I can't endanger the town like that. Tell me your thoughts on the Bronze Brotherhood. They were here since the Crossing was founded. Lethian herself hired them to protect the settlement when it was just getting started. A fledgling town in the shadow of the Old Walls. They did such a good job, she kept them on as our peacekeepers, and that's how things went at least until you decided to oust them and put someone else in their place. Can't say I wouldn't have done the same, truth be told. Taking pay from two employers is always going to end badly if you can't make both of them happy. On top of that, it seems lately that Raytamon is traveling a path no one can see, and I don't want to see what's at the end of it. Tell me what you think about the disfavored. Strict curfews, frequent searches, and no forgiveness for missed iron and grain quotas. That's the ill of it. But the sentries keep constant vigil and treat us with respect. Politeness, even. Most of them call me elder and bow. If someone's going fishing in your pocket and taking your crops, may as well be kind about it. The disfavored are committed to honor and dignity in all dealings. That's so. I've seen the disfavored impale a man for insulting a precious graven ash. I've seen them hang prisoners for eating rats when their food was ran low. At least the Scar Scarlet Chorus doesn't have any delusion about cruelty. We do it because it's fun. Honor goes both ways, you balding witch. Those who flaunt the offerings of Kairos' peace find no solace in the Legion. It's definitely not the Legion I would have chosen, not the situation I would have chosen, but things can always be worse. The water might be up to your knees, but it could also be up to your nose, is what my grandmother would tell me. What are the Earthshaker mages? A few have passed through the crossing in recent times, all headed south to the Stone Sea. At least that's the word of it. The mages didn't stay for long. He gestures to the massive stone façade of the old walls. And I'm glad they kept on traveling. If some madman cast a spell that cracked the foundations of the old walls, well, praise Kairos, it hasn't happened. What of the forge bound? They toil away in their forge houses day in, night out. Kairos's forces keep them well guarded since they know how to work binding ore into weapons harder than stone or bronze. I've delivered food and kindling to the forge houses, but never had much contact with the artisan mages. All right. How have your interactions with the Scarlet Chorus been? Can't say that I have a strong opinion one way or the other, really. They don't seem to care much about leaving the settlement behind. Once the decision was made to let the disfavored have control, they left, and I haven't seen much of them since. Pretty sure I'm going to need some directions around here. <laughs> I completely understand. The crossing can be a bit intimidating the first time someone arrives, but it's not as complicated as it looks. The river is named Portuscor, and it flows down the middle of the settlement. The waterfalls pouring over the old walls are sunrise and moonrise. The west waterfall is sunrise because of how the sun hits it in the morning, and moonrise got its name due to how it glows during a full moon. The crossing itself is broken up into districts named after the waterfalls. The west side of the river is the Sunrise District, and the east side of the river is the Moonrise District. The different levels of Lethian's Crossing don't really have names, but most people refer to them as the Tiers. My home is considered part of the Ground Tier. The Forge is on the first tier, both in the Moonrise District. Hmm. I have other questions. Uh, actually, no, I'll be on my way. Of course. I must go to the Spire to make sure everything is ready. I'll meet you there when Zidenia is ready to place the artifact. This is an interesting little place here. I kind of like Lithian's Crossing. 
Anyway, let's continue looking around this place. Observe as a denier place in the so helm. Hard. We will eventually. Forge bound hammer. Hmm. And that we wasn't got so hard. Headhunter plans. These plans detail how to forge the mythical blade known as Headhunter. This item can be created with access to a spire forge upgrade and proper materials. Hey, new spire forge plan. These worn iron weapons look as if they have been recently repaired and are being ready to be shipped back out. This armor is newly made by the forge bound. It is still warm to the touch. It's hot. Don't touch it. <laughs> That's simple enough. Ulantis surveys the room with an air of superiority. He addresses you without making eye contact. Is there something you want? Oh. Forgebound supply cache. Ulantis catches a stare of Lohara, who beams at him, expecting something to occur. Ulantis sighs dejectedly before turning his attention back to you with a strange smile. Forgive me, Fatebinder. Lohara instructed me to reward you for your aid during the conquest. The conscripted beastmen helped us forge countless iron materials, and in return, I am to show you the location of a supply cache. Volantis takes her map into his hands and circles a small clearing in Haven. Oh. Well, then. Uh, is there a problem? He, uh, his eyes carefully watch Lohara as he answers you. Yes, but these are forge-bound matters. Nothing that concerns the High Court of Tudon, I can assure you. What do you do here in the forge? I keep things running smoothly. Upkeep, mostly. I am also second in command to Lohara, so in case anything ever happens to her, I'm here to take charge. Well, let's speak with Lohara. A muscular woman stands upright from her forge and turns to look at you, the light of the fire playing across her face, making her eyes dance dangerously. A toothy smile breaks across her mouth, the only bright spot on her soot-stained face. Do you kill with your left hand or your right? She rubs blackened palms together, eyeing you expectantly. Normally I can tell at a glance, but you are a little harder to read. Why would you like to know? The gauntlet is the hardest piece of the panoply and the most rewarding to work. So many scales of so many different sizes. Then there's the rivets. She slides her thumb and fingers together, shedding flecks of soot and iron dust. I imagine you see a lot of battle in your line of work. One gauntlet is invariably going to wear out before the other. My mind is always thinking on what will need repairs first. It's as simple as that. Well, I'm right-handed, so the right hand. Noted. She clears her throat and wipes her blackened hands on the canvas of her smock. I am Lohara, master of tempering and forge master of Lethian's Crossing. My tasks exceed the hours left in the day, but there is no harm in pausing my work that means speaking with the fate binder. I must say, denying both the disfavored and the Scarlet Chorus of extra weapons was pretty brave of you. I expect the Car Scarlet Chorus to offer a bribe, but the disfavored? If they would stoop to those tactics, who knows what else they're capable of? Hmm. How may I be of assistance? I'm looking for some napping tools on behalf of Jaspos. Jaspos? None of us have heard from him in some time. He certainly did his part to create the forge here, but there's little else for a napper to do after, settling, after setting the foundation. I'm quite certain he was ordered to return home. She grabs an iron ingot and holds it aloft. This, on the other hand, is the vanguard of my of my our work. My tour of duty ends only when there are no more enemies from my iron to kill. So where did Jaspers end up? Hmm. He's in a remote settlement in the mountains bordering the north. Claims to be one of its founders. She scratches her chin, smearing soot across them in short streaks. Now that's odd. Kairos gives us leeway in our duties, but a several years' absence would be frowned upon. That settlement would have to be producing something valuable to excuse his detour. At least I hope so. For his sake. A smile creeps across her face, and she offers a half-hearted shrug. But he's not my ward and not my concern. Still, good to know that he's alive. What do you know of Jaspers? Only the superficials, sadly. He worked in stone. I'm more keen on metal, so we rarely compared notes. I knew he was arrogant, confident beyond his years and talent. Not to say he was inept, far from it. But a few years of flaking shirt does not make one Kyrus's gift to the forge bound. 
Does Jaspers have any associates still around? Once this place was built, most of the nappers were sent home. I know his supervisor was Cassandra, master of napping. She was sent home as well. She's a bit on in years, but not quite fit for the long walk back, so I think she's currently enjoying a boat ride home. Did the stone nappers leave behind any of their tools? If so, where might I find them? I have no idea what inventory the stonesmiths kept with them. All of our stone workers left some time ago. A few of them meant to return north by ocean travel, which meant first traveling to the southern coastline. I'd imagine they were, they're probably gone by now, but if you need those tools, I can't imagine they had room on the galley to take all their sledgehammers. If I were you, I'd ask around for Cassandra, or, since she's likely on a boat home right now, see if some local was drafted to attend to her or haul her stuff. Maybe they inherited some of her excess belongings she couldn't take on the boat. Aside from that, I suppose in the abstract I could have someone cast a few chisels and hammers, but if you're looking for tools made by and for the stone experts, I think South Haven is your best bet short of slogging it back to Fort Resolution. I must be going. The village of South Haven. Okay, that's something to do. The smith turns from the heat of her workspace, her form la limbed in a shimmering orange glow. She hangs her heavy, sigil-carved hammer from her apron, the magical flames licking the length of its head, doing her no harm. Fatebinder, what brings you to the forge? Lohara sets down her hammer, then wipes her hands on her aprons, an action that serves only to further muddle the sweat and soot on both. I hoped you would examine Barak. Did the adjudicator not issue an injunction against precisely that action? Indeed, he sent the decision by bird to each of the guild workshops. I have the utmost respect for the work of your guild, and would do nothing to jeopardize its standing with the overlord. Yet you must admit Barak's armor a magical marvel. Surely an examination wouldn't run afoul of the law. You forge words like a courtier, and I have little doubt that you could twist any argument to your advantage were we pressed to answer for a crime. Allow me to state this in no uncertain terms, Fatebinder. The Forgebound swore our allegiance to tune on the Adjudicator, Archon of Justice. We do not easily forget that oath, nor do we wish to circumvent it. Our fastidiousness is not limited to our craft. Loyalty to an oath looks like this, Fatebinder, in case you had forgotten. All right. I don't suppose that you know any skilled smiths who lack your ironclad sense of loyalty. Behind the obscurity of his helm, you can hear Barrack grinding his teeth. You asked me to be an accomplice to your crime. There may be an individual who can help you. Rumor has it that there's a mage smith of some manner in the Stone Sea. By all rights, she should have been killed, so I assume that she's worked out a deal with that glowing green bastard Narat. I cannot provide you with a name, but you might ask around Halfgate if you have the misfortune of being in that area. I appreciate it, Lohara. Goodbye, Fatebinder. As far as I'm concerned, this conversation never occurred. You have returned! Lohara turns to face you, her body covered head to toe in charred hues, chest rising and falling under the strain of labored breathing. There is always more demand for iron than there is time in, it, in the day. She removes a set of heavy canvas gloves and balls her fists, the joints of her fingers cracking in unison. How may I be of assistance? There's a lot that I can ask, but this episode has reached its limit, and I'm not going to take another 15 minutes talking to her. Not in this episode. So next episode, we'll talk to her, and then go outside and talk to other people. That'll be in the next episode. So until then, I'm Chesswick44, that is Jason Pendragon, Barrack, Verse, and Ebb. This has been a Let's Play of Tyranny, and I shall see you all next time.